Hi, this is section 5.1 and 5.2 together, integer exponents and scientific notation. This is arguably the most important section in the entire course. Almost everything we do from now on will involve some of these rules. Um, I've written down all 11 properties right here. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of them. Um, you do need to know these. Now, it's not really going to be memorization. It's really, as you get more practice, you're going to recognize these patterns and you're not going to have to think about it anymore. Okay, now as we go along, I have all of these written down on a note card so that we can easily refer to them. But let's talk about what these are, okay? What we have here on the first one is a to the m power times a to the n power is the same thing as a to the m plus n. Notice that your bases are the same, that's what we call the number on the bottom, and our exponents, they could be the same, but most of the time they're going to be different. If you're multiplying two things with the same base, then you get to add their exponents. Now, what I can do is I can show you why this might be true, okay? So let's say we had x to the third times x squared. If we follow the property here, see we have the same base, it says we should add those exponents to get x to the fifth, okay? So that's just using the property. Most of these, except for the you know negative exponent thing and the zero, which we'll talk about in a minute, but a lot of these properties you can understand even um, just by using the definition of an exponent. X to the third power, anytime you have a third power, it means you're multiplying that base by itself three times. So this is X times X times X, that's X cubed, okay? Times X squared, so this is X times X. Okay, now we have five x's multiplied together, so using the definition of exponents, we would get x to the fifth. That's exactly where this property comes from. That happens every time, okay? Second property, anything to the zero power is one. This is easy, people make it hard all the time. If it's got a zero, um, if it's something raised to the zero power, it's one, period, okay? Note, a cannot equal zero. We don't do zero to the zero power, but that's a special case. It doesn't come up in the course, so don't worry about it, but it, it is true, okay? Now for a negative exponent. The way I was taught this is that negative exponents are unhappy and they want to go on the other side of the fraction bar. So it's kind of like um, grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. They're not happy here, so we move them to the other side of the fence, and it becomes a positive exponent, okay? So if you just have a to the negative n, it moves directly into the denominator. Okay, here's the division property. Notice that we have the same base. That's important. We cannot do this if our bases are different. If you have a to the m over a to the n, you get a to the m minus n. So why might we be subtracting exponents? Well, let's do it this way again. If I had x cubed over x squared, I have the same base, and that says I should subtract my exponents, which will give me x to the first power, and we usually don't write the one because mathematicians are lazy. Okay, well, let's think about what this means. This means x times x times x, over x times x. And then if we just start canceling things out, these x's cancel, these x's cancel, and what are you left with? A single x. That's what's happening every time there. Okay? Now, property five follows directly from property number three. If you have a negative exponent in the bottom, it's unhappy in the bottom, so you move it to the other side of the fraction bar. Same thing here. Here we're allowed to have different bases, and so we're not really combining these. We don't get to do something like this. But right here, what we do is this one's unhappy, so it moves to the top. This one's unhappy, it moves to the bottom. And then once you move them to the other side of the fraction bar, they are positive exponents. OK, 
okay? Number seven, A to the M to the N. If you have a power raised to a power, you get to multiply those exponents. Make sure you see the difference between these two, okay? This is A to the M times A to the N. This is A to the M raised to the N power. A power raised to a power, you multiply your exponents. Now, let's see why that might be true as compared to this one. So let's say I had x cubed squared. Our property says we should multiply those exponents together and we would get x to the sixth. Here we got x to the fifth. This says we should get x to the sixth. Well, let's just think about the meaning of exponents. Something squared means that something times itself, which would be x times x, oh, x cubed times x cubed. We can then follow the property we used up here, three plus three is six. But if you still don't remember that, x times x times x, that's x cubed, times another x cubed, and then you count up how many x's you have multiplied together, and you get the six. Okay. A, to the M, uh, A times B to the M. When you have things multiplied together, and this is written with two things multiplied together, but it could be a hundred, it could be a million. As long as it's all multiplication, this property will work. You take this exponent and you apply it to each one. This is kind of like the distribution property. Technically it's not because distribution property in math is very specific, but it feels a lot the same way. And it works with the English definition of distribute. You take this and you hand it out to each one, okay? Something similar happens right here on A over B or A divided by B. When you have an exponent on the outside, it applies to the top and the bottom. Okay, now here, 10 and 11, these are alternate definitions. Um, so it's kind of like these two. Somebody's done a lot of work for you already and you can use these when they are particularly helpful. An alternate way of writing a to the negative n is one over a to the nth power, okay? So if you wanna see why that's true. So my first property says a to the negative n is one over a to the n, and the other property says a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the negative n. No, to the positive end, sorry. Okay, well, let's think about what this would mean. We have the property right here that says you can take the exponent and put it on each one. So this is one to the nth power over a to the nth power. Well, one to any power whatsoever is one. Okay. So this is one over a to the n, which is exactly the same thing here. Okay, so like I said, you are going to be using these properties a whole lot. Pretty much everything for the rest of the course is based on this. So you really, really need to get these down. I would say your most important ones are one, two, three, Mm, six, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, it would probably four too. Okay. All the rest of them follow from other things. Okay. If you've got these down, then everything is going to, uh, you'll be able to do everything. Maybe not as quickly as you would have liked, but everything will work. Okay. So let's just start with some examples. I want to multiply y to the fourth times y to the fifth times y to the sixth. Okay, now I'm going to identify the steps by the um, uh, property number. Okay, what I have is I'm multiplying all these things together and they all have the same base. When you multiply things together that have the same base, you get to add their exponents. So I'm using property one right here. And I'm gonna write out every step because you want that in your notes. This is equal to y to the 
4 plus 5 plus 6, and then when you add those, you get y to the 15th power. Now, you could have written this out four times, and then this one five, and then this one six, and counted, you would have had 15. Okay, so let's look at nine to the sixth times nine to the fourth. Well, here we have the same base, and we are multiplying things together. So again, this is property number one. Notice up here, my base was y and my base did not change. The same thing happens here. Just because it's a number does not mean it changes value. This is nine to the six plus four, which is nine to the 10th power. This is not 81 to the 10th power. That is the most common mistake. This base does not change, okay? Now you might be wondering when they're going to want you to multiply out your answer and when they want your answer written this way, okay? Um, often they will say to leave your answer in exponential form. And by that they mean you, you can just leave it written as an exponent and not multiply everything out. Um, the other rule of thumb is, in general, if you can do the calculation in your head, they'll want you to multiply it out. If you can't, then they won't, okay? Now, I'm going to use a calculator just to show you how big this number is. 9 raised to the 10th power is, what is that? 3,486,789,000. Can't do that in your head. This will be the answer they're looking for.